Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss current affairs of 6th February 2022. In this lecture, we are going to discuss 9 topics which are very much relevant from our UPSC point of view. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see a brief introduction regarding the topics now we are going to have our discussion. So first topic is about Jammu and Kashmir delimitation draft. Actually, the final report of this Jammu and Kashmir delimitation draft came into picture. And NC, which is mainly opposed this uh, report, and it also said that it is unconstitutional. So we are going to discuss that article. And actually here you need to focus on what is this delimitation, what is this delimitation commission. And here you need to know about constitutional provisions of delimitation. So these are very important from our basics point of view. So if you know basics, then we can build building on that based on our current fights, right? So we are going to discuss even the basics, which are very much relevant from that article also to understand the concept the most. And this topic is important from your polity point of view, which mainly comes under GS paper too. And next topic is about center to form FPO's former producer organizations with small farmers. So actually these two topics, second and third topics are related to Prime Minister visit to Hyderabad, right? So Prime Minister went to this Ikrisat and he also went for this uh, Munichintan there. He unveiled uh, this Ramanuja, okay, statue of this Ramanuja. So this will be very important actually and these two topics are very important from your prelims point of view and you need to know some facts here. And here in this Ikrisat, our Prime Minister gave some statements. So those statements is very important from our main point of view. And he came up with some statements regarding, so what are the steps taken by the government, especially for the farmers, okay? And he also talked about inequality as well. So those statements are very important to write even an essay and even your main answer. And next topic is regarding this Vainard Sanctuary. So what happened, summer it is going to begin. So because of this, animals mainly start their migration. So because of this, we can see here in this Vaynard Sanctuary, wildlife migration mainly began. And we are going to understand what are the steps were taken by the forest department. So this topic it is important from your environment and ecology, which mainly comes under GS paper 3. And next topic it is about Sariska weights the stripes of success. So it is talking about this tiger number. And this topic is also important from environment and ecology, which mainly comes under GS paper 3. And next topic, it is about earliest solar storm. So here we need to understand what is this solar storm. So this will be important from your prelims and it will be from your basic static portion, right? So this article is important from science and technology. So recently researchers mainly studied ice from this Greenland and Antarctica and they came up with this earliest solar storm. And next topic is, is about choking oceans. So this article which is mainly focusing on climate change impact on ocean biodiversity. And this topic is at most important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes under GS paper 3. And next topic it is about moon magic. So it is mainly based on the moon and the size of the earth. So this is important from your science and technology, which mainly comes under GS paper 3. And next topic it is about Antarctic microbes may help in plastic clean. So it is talking about microbes are present in this Antarctica. So they may help in the plastic cleanup. So this article it is important from science and technology and even environment and ecology, which mainly comes under GS paper 3. So today is Sunday. And from today, Sunday's newspaper, every Sunday, you can get current affairs related to this environment and ecology and as well as science and technology. So I will suggest you people, please don't skip this Sunday's newspaper. So in this Sunday's newspaper analysis, you are going to focus exclusively on this environment and ecology and as well as science and technology. So now let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see the quote. So today's quote, it is regarding education. So education is one of the favorite topic of UPSC and even in your GS paper too, you will be having a topic regarding this education as well. So the quote here says that education is the passport to the future. Okay, 
Education is the passport to the future. For tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. So who prepare for education today? Then this education will be acts as a passport for the future. That means education plays an important role in the life. Okay. So here we can connect this article with children's education, right to education, and as well as you can talk about recent ASA report as well. So whenever you are writing answer regarding this importance of education, then you can quote this uh, quote. Okay. So now let us try to see the first topic. Title says. Many seats redrawn in Jammu and Kashmir delimitation draft. So what happened here? Here already we know that in 2019, in 2019, especially on 5th August 2019, our government of India came up with revocation of Article 370 of Indian Constitution. Okay, we came up with this diluting of this Article 370 on August 5th 2019. And after that, we came up with this delimitation. Delimitation was undertaken by the virtue of this Jammu and Kashmir uh, constitution under this Jammu and Kashmir Representation of Peoples Act of 1957. Okay. So, before this 2019, whatever the delimitation that is present in this Jammu and Kashmir. So, this was mainly present on this Jammu and Kashmir constitution under which there is a one important act that is Jammu and Kashmir uh, representation of people's act of 1957 okay so based on this there was delimitation of assembly and as well as Lok Sabha but now we came up with a new delimitation commission and this new delimitation commission came up with a report and in this report national conference okay so national conference which is made rejecting this report and it says that this report it is unconstitutional so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so what is the context if we are talking about context here Jammu and Kashmir delimitation commission has come out with a fresh interim report okay so now new Jammu and Kashmir delimitation commission which came up with a finally fresh interim report and this report which mainly proposed for redrawing of many assembly and as well as Lok Sabha constituencies in Kashmir okay so besides allocation of one more seat to division and also six more to Jammu and Kashmir it came up with the redrawing of many assembly and as well as Lok Sabha constituencies in Jammu in Kashmir so what happened so this panel has shared the report with associate members for example it includes like three MPs of a national conference and two of BJP. So according to this national conference lawmakers, so what are the suggestions they are mainly uh, given by this report? They, they said that this interim report, it is unconstitutional. They are rejecting this report. So this is the thing. And now let us go on to our basics and let us try to see what is this delimitation. So you need to know basics, right? So these basics will be very important in your prelims, especially they will be like potential prelim statements. So if you're talking about this delimitation, so this delimitation is nothing but it is an act of redrawing boundaries of Lok Sabha and as well as assembly constituencies. For example, if there is any state, okay, or if there is any state, if you want to go for elections, so this area will be divided into constituencies and this division of this constituencies or redrawing boundaries of this Lok Sabha and assembly constituencies. So this exercise is called as in simply it is called as delimitation okay so why we need a delimitation and why we need to go for redrawing of those constraints which are already present so already you know that the population will be increased day by day right so whenever the population is increasing in one constituency and one in another constituency there is a uh, there is stagnant population means what happened so there will be the difference that is mainly seen so because of this we need to come up with the constituencies division such that equal population is allocated right so it mainly represents the changes in the population okay so based on uh, census so after one census is come so based on the population they will be going for redrawing of this constituencies and this exercise of this delimitation which is mainly carried out by this delimitation committee commission so this delimitation commission which is mainly going for this exercise of delimitation 
and whatever the orders whatever the orders which are mainly come up by this delimitation commission they have force of law and they cannot be questioned before any court so this might be one prelim statement so if you are talking about our constitutional provisions what are those constitutional provisions means in our constitution we can see different articles will be present so which are the articles which are talking about this delimitation there are two articles which are talking about this delimitation first one is article 82 of indian constitution second one is article 170 so if you are talking about this article 82 which mainly provides the parliament with the authority to enact a delimitation act after every census so this article 82 which mainly says that so authority which is given to the parliament okay parliament need to enact this delimitation act after every census and they need to come up with redrawing of the boundaries of this constituencies based on the population and if you are talking about the second article that is article 170 article 170 of indian constitution which mainly provides that states states they get divided into territorial constituencies as per the delimitation act after every census so it is regarding the states right and next one is who will going to set up this delimitation commission so authority which is present with the union government so this is also one prelims fact so the union government setups this delimitation commission once the act is in force and if you talk about what are the objectives regarding this delimitation so one thing here is we need to give the equal representation for equal population so equal representation for equal population segments so in this way we can go for fair division of geographical area okay so that no political party has an advantage so these are the some important prelims facts that you need to remember regarding this delimitation and here i added separate box regarding this constant provisions so that is about article 82 and article 170 that already i discussed now let us try to talk about next topic it is regarding center to form former producer organizations with small farmers so here you need to focus on this small farmers why small farmers already you know that india's primary economic activity that we can see is agriculture and more than 50 percentage of people in india they mainly depend upon this agriculture and agriculture it is a primary activity so because of this we can say the economy of india it is agrarian economy so out of this farmers who are mainly engaged in this farming activities more than 80 percent farmers are small and marginal farmers so because of this whenever we are coming up with this farmer producer organizations with the small farmers that will be going to benefit this small this farmers a lot and that will be helpful to achieve our target of doubling of the farmer incomes by 2022 as well so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail first let us try to see this context already you know that our prime minister attended this ICRISAT. okay so in that ceremony here our prime minister gave some statements so we are going to see that statements so if we are talking about central theme of this article which mainly says that our prime minister says country committed to achieving the net zero by 2070 to tackle climate change so already you know that in this cop 26 conference of parties that recently held in november 2021 in glasgow our prime minister came up with a statement that we are going to achieve this net zero by 2070 so what is this net zero net zero is also called as carbon neutrality so what is this carbon neutrality that is how much amount of carbon dioxide which is released into atmosphere is equal to the amount of carbon dioxide which is absorbed so the net is equal to zero so this concept it is called as net zero or we can say carbon neutrality so actually the different countries they came up with the different targets for example developed countries they said that they are going to achieve this carbon neutrality by 2050 and if you're talking about china they said that they are going to achieve by 2060 and india said that we are going to achieve by 2070 so this is the some introduction regarding this carbon neutrality that you need to know so if you're talking about details it mainly says that our prime minister our prime minister stated that union government is resolved to mobilize small farmers into the formal producer organizations 
so in this way whenever the small farmers who are in who are included in this farmer producer organizations then these small and marginal farmers they will be having access to this market forces and finance that will helps to improve the income of this farmers so this is the one first thing which mainly said by our prime minister that is we can include or we can go for resolving to mobilize small farmers into this farmer producer organizations and next one is so second important statement which is given by our prime minister was we are also committed to save the farmers farming community from the impact of climate change okay so because of this climate change we can see there will be the impact on the farmers community so here you can talk about different problems faced by the farmers like pre harvesting problems during harvesting and post harvesting problems so because of this untime rains and as well as because of this drought which is mainly because of this climate change so that will be having some negative impact on this farming community so because of this whenever we are addressing this climate change so we can also address some important problems that are mainly faced by this farming community as well so mainly to address those challenges here our prime minister that said that government which is mainly focusing on digital agriculture and natural and chemical free farming okay and even in the recent budget they also focused on focused on through throw an opportunity for world of opportunities for the youth also so whenever youth who are involved in this agriculture whenever they are focusing on this digital agriculture and natural or organic farming with chemical free farming then it will be also providing this opportunities for the youth as well and he mainly gave some statements in launching the celebrations and inaugurating two two new research facilities so first one is climate change research facility on plant protection and second one is rapid generation advancement facility so in launching and inaugurating these two new research facilities our prime minister who gave mainly some important statements so first statement is regarding small farmers already you know that more than 18% of our farming community in india they are mainly small and as well as marginal farmers that means they are they are having land which is less than 2.5 hectares of land that is less than 5 acres of land right and these small and marginal farmers they are mainly facing some adverse impact because of this climate change so because of this these centers will help mainly to fight against this climate change and and it will be also helpful to achieve our commitment to achieve this net zero target by this 20 uh, net zero target by 2070 as well so this is one important statement as part of our national mission to achieve this self reliance in oil seeds edible oil production even central government which is also promoting this oil palm cultivation so already you know that oil seeds we are mainly getting some we are not much self reliant in this oil seeds and if you are talking about edible oil production also we are not much self sufficient we are mainly importing from other countries especially if you are talking about this oil palm or palm oil we are importing especially from this southern, southern eastern countries as well so because of this here recently even government of telangana and as well as government of india they are mainly promoting this palm oil cultivation so in this context here prime minister mainly said that center would be promoting oil palm cultivation in the 6.5 lakh hectares over next 5 years and in this context our our prime minister also said that digital farming would include extensive use of kisan drones for crop assessment and insecticide and nutrient spraying digitalization of land records okay so in this way here it will also provides huge opportunities for the youth as well so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding committed to ending inequality says modi so already you know that our prime minister yesterday he visited this munichintal okay there he inaugurated 216 foot statue of equality right so here this is very very important and this uh, statue it is of uh, ramanuja chari and uh, here you need to know about what is this equality and here you need to know about ramanuja chari already in yesterday's lecture we studied about this ramanuja chari and now let us try to understand what are the statements which are given by our prime minister in this article so this will be very important when you are writing your mains answer as well 
So if you are talking about context, it mainly says that our Prime Minister unveils 216 foot statue of Vaishnavite a saint that is Ramanujacharya near Hyderabad. Our Prime Minister unveils 216 foot statue of Vaishnavite a saint that is Ramanujacharya. Here this will be the one important prelims fact. He is not Shaivite but he is Vaishnavite. Okay, so even if you see the image of Modi ji yesterday, so he mainly had this uh, this type of tilak on his forehead. So this tilak it is for Vaish Vaishnavites. If you are talking about Shaivites, it will be like this way. Okay, so here you can and you can also uh, you can also get some pictographic memory as well. So if you are watching any news or if you are uh, watch if you are seeing this uh, newspaper articles in some figures, then by this pictographic memory also you can. You can get some prelims of related uh, things. Okay, when you are confused, you can get this pictographic memory back, and you can answer those questions as well. And so, if you are talking about details, it mainly says that Prime Minister underscored the Union Government's commitment to eliminating inequalities in the country while pursuing the path of sabka saath sabka vikas. So, here in this context, our Prime Minister mainly said that. Government, it is mainly focusing to eliminate inequalities in the country, and how how means we are mainly pursuing the path of sabka saath sabka vikas. That is everyone's support and as well as everyone's progress. So our prime minister also said that social justice is embed is embedded in all the central welfare schemes. For example, he talked about Jhandan Yojana. He talked about free cooking gas connections. That is PM Ujwala Yojana, and this one is Swachh Bharat Mission. These are the number of missions or welfare schemes which are mainly come up by central government, and in these schemes, social justice is already embedded. And our prime minister also said that there is no social sanction for evils, like for example, discrimination in this age. Okay, so we need to focus on live and let live with the honor and as well as dignity. And in this context, Modi ji also praised the great tradition of Telugu culture as well. Okay. He also made a note regarding this Telugu film industry as well. So Telugu film industry also had been popular even throughout the world now. And if you're talking about in state of Telangana recently, Ramapa Temple in Varangal, uh, which also got this World Heritage Site, right? So here Ramapa Temple recently got this World Heritage Site by UNESCO. And even if you're talking about one village that is Pochampalli village, which also got which also got World Tourism Organization. Okay, so because of this, he said that there are many relics of uh, cult rich culture heritage that mainly left by Shata Vahanas and as well as Kakatiya dynasties that are mainly present, and this will be helpful for tourism as well. So, these are the some important things that you need to remember regarding this topic. And now, let us try to see next topic it is regarding wildlife migration to Vaynar sanctuary begins. So, it is talking about wildlife migration to this Vaynar sanctuary. So here you need to focus on this Vaynar sanctuary and here you need to also focus on what are the steps that are taken by the government regarding this wildlife migration in upcoming summer. So if you are talking about context, it mainly says that with the onset of summer, with the onset of summer, the seasonal migration of wild animals that has begun. So from here, from this area, this animals will be migrated to nearby area here, right? So here, if you are talking about this seasonal migration, especially seasonal migration of this wild animals that had begun from adjacent wildlife sanctuaries in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, okay. So from wildlife sanctuaries which is present in this Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, they are mainly moving towards this Vaynard Wildlife Sanctuary. So if you are talking about details, so this sanctuary which is having a wide range of wild animals during the summer. Because we can see there will be the easy availability of water and as well as water will be available in this wildlife sanctuary throughout the year. And because of this, there are many steps that are mainly taken by the officials regarding availability of water, availability of water, etc. And they also took some protectional measures as well. So we are talking about what are the steps that are taken. So first one is they went for construction of about 26 new Bush, brush, brush, wood, uh, check dams. Okay, they came up with this building of this check dams. So whenever they are building this ch uh, check dams, that will be helpful for desiltation and as well as that will be helpful for available of drinking water for animals. And next one is they also came up with this fodder management. 
So about 289 hectares of coarse grasslands have been trimmed to grow soft grass here. Okay. And next one is even the sanctuary authorities, they are also planning to map fields as well as water bodies. And finally, they want to ensure water supply and as well as drinking water supply that is present even in this dry season. And they also came up with the fry, fire breakers. So what is the use of these fire breakers? So already you know that in this uh, summer season, the trees become very, very dry. And whenever the wind blows means that will also lead to the forest fire. Mainly to prevent this forest fires, they came up with these fire breakers. Okay, five fire breakers, they have been erected along 195 kilometers right and next one is apart from this 24 permanent anti-poaching camps and they also came up with the five watch towers at strategic points as well okay so this is about this topic and now let's try to see the map here so this is a map of kerala and here at the bottom you can see nayar here we have papra and shedurne periyar iduki and you can see here chimnoi and Tatekadu and er, uh, Eravi Kulam is present and Kurinji Mala is present and here we have Silent Valley and here we have Malabar here we have Vainat Sanctuary and we are here we have this Aralam and Kotadu, Kotayur so these are some important uh, forest cover that is mainly seen in this Kerala region so if you are talking about some facts regarding this Vainad Wildlife Sanctuary so actually this sanctuary is one of the integral part of Nilagiri Biosphere Reserve and this sanctuary was established in year 1973. In 1973 itself it was uh, came up into picture and if you are talking about this Nilagiri Biosphere Reserve it is one of the first from India to be included in this UNESCO's designated World Network Biosphere Reserves and it mainly designated in year 2012. And other parks and as well as some reserves, they include Mood Malai Wildlife Sanctuary, Bandipur National Park, Nagar Hold National Park, Mukurti National Park and as well as Silent Valley. And actually this Vainad Wildlife Sanctuary which is a contiguous to Tiger Reserves, it is mainly present at Nagar Hold, Bandipur, Mood Malai etc. And here in this area, one river which mainly flows that is River Kabni. So this is very very important. And we can see wide uh, range of uh, animals like um, elephants, goats, tigers, uh, panthers, sambar, spotted deer, barking deer, wild boar. So these are some important animals that we can see. So apart from this, okay, we can see the some most of this uh, moist dry moist deciduous forest that is mainly seen in this region. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic. That is says earliest solar storm. So here you need to know about what is the solar storm. So this will be important from your basics, right? So here, what is this article talking about? So recently, so recently uh, researchers, they mainly came with analysis of ice from this Greenland and as well as Antarctica. And they found that earliest solar storm, which mainly formed and when that is like 9,200 years ago. So this article, it is important from your science and technology point of view. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you see context, it mainly says that through analysis of ice cores from Greenland and Antarctica, a research team, they found that the evidence of an extreme solar storm that occurred about 9,200 years ago. So by studying this ice cores from this Greenland and Antarctica, they mainly found that extreme solar storm that occurred about 9200 years ago. So what is the relationship between this ice cores and as well as solar storm? So you might be getting this doubt, right? So what happened? They mainly found some important particles, okay? So based on that, they mainly came up with the conclusion that so this earliest solar storm which mainly formed 9200 years ago. So researchers mainly had some puzzles regarding the storm took place during one of the sun's more quiet phase during which generally believed or uh, believed our planet has less exposure to such events so actually this study mainly found that we, okay about uh, 9200 years ago this solar storm was formed but here the puzzle that is mainly present in the researcher's mind here is so 
how this time that is 9200 years ago how the solar storm which mainly formed because it was a quiet phase at that time the planet which is mainly much less exposed to this uh, events and currently we just mainly believe that solar storms are more likely during so called as sunspot cycle okay but in this quiet cycle or quiet phase so there was a solar storm which mainly formed so if we are talking about details of this study so here researchers mainly discovered the traces of massive solar storm that mainly hit earth during one of the sun's passive phases so during the sun's passive phase about 9200 years ago massive solar storm that mainly hit earth and researchers also came up with the drill codes for peaks of radioactive isotopes of beryllium and as well as chlorine 36 and here in this study researchers mainly found that isotopes that is radioactive isotopes of beryllium 10 and as well as chlorine 13 they were found in this ice actually these radioactive isotopes which are mainly produced by high energy cosmic particles that reach the earth and they will be preserved in ice and as well as they will be sedimented so by this they mainly came into confirmation that so massive solar storm which mainly happened 9200 years ago and if you are talking about this cosmogenic radio nucleo nucleotides okay such as carbon 14 as well as beryllium 10 and chlorine 36 they were produced within the earth's atmosphere as the result of interaction of galactic cosmic rays with its constituents or modulated by solar and as well as earth magnetic field so what happened these are also called as cosmogenic radio nucleotides so for example we can say carbon 14 beryllium 10 and as well as chlorine 36 so they are mainly produced in the earth atmosphere because of result of interactions of this galactic cosmic rays that are mainly coming from the solar storm and after that so these uh, cosmic nucleotides they will be modulated by solar and as well as uh, earth magnetic fields okay and we also see there is a enhanced flux of relatively low energy particles during this solar energy particle event and that can also trigger some additional production of cosmogenic radio nucleotides re, uh, leaving an imprint in the environmental archives so we can also see there is a enhanced there is a increased increased flux of relatively low energy particles during this solar energy energetic particle event during this solar storm we can see there is a enhanced flux that is increasing of relatively low energy particles okay and that will also leads to the production of this cosmogenic radio nucleotides okay so because of this we can understand through the study that so solar storm massive solar storm that happened Uh, like nine thousand two hundred years ago. So this is the image of this solar storm. We can see the winds which are coming from this sun, and that is having some effect on this earth magnetic field as well. So if you are talking about some facts regarding the solar storm, so first you need to understand what is the meaning of this solar storm. Solar storm it is also called as coronal mass ejection. Okay, solar storm or coronal mass ejection. as astronomers they mainly call it is an ejection of highly magnetized particles okay so it is an ejection of highly magnetized particles from the sun so from the sun we can see there is a highly magnetized particles that will be ejected so this is called as a coronal mass ejection or this solar storm so these particles they have the capability even they can travel several million kilometers per hour okay they can carry several million kilometers per hour and they take about 13 hours to 5 days okay they can take like 13 hours to 5 days to reach the surface of earth and i already know that in our earth atmosphere so we have different gases and even we have ozone layer so here earth atmosphere which mainly protects us humans from these particles okay so one important impact of the solar storm here is so these particles they have capability to interact with the earth magnetic field such that they can also induce strong electric currents on the surface and affects its man made structures so this is about this solar storm and now let us try to talk about next topic it is regarding choking oceans so this article which is talking about this climate models okay climate models and uh, this climate models which mainly talking about impact of climate change on dissolved oxygen in this water so this article it is important from your environment and ecology 
which mainly comes under this GS paper 3. So how can you use this article? So when you are writing answer regarding the impact of climate change, you can also add this article as a case study, right? So if you see context, it mainly says that a new study that mainly uses climate models, okay, new study that uses climate models to predict how the reduction, how there is reducing of dissolved oxygen in the water that will take place. And this mainly finds that this process begins in the regions of ocean that support marine life around 2021. So in this study, they are mainly using this climate models and they are mainly predicting like how the reduced dissolved oxygen in the water that will take place and finds this process began in the region of the ocean and it mainly supports this marine life around 2021. That means so because of this climate change, what will be the impact on this uh, dissolved oxygen? So whenever there is reducing or decreasing of this dissolved oxygen means finally that will be having some impact on this marine biodiversity as well. So if you see the further details of this article, it mainly says that the recent study which mainly published in geophysical research letters, which mainly predicts that there is decreasing of oxygen dissolving. That is, there is the deoxygenation that is increasing. And because of this deoxygenation, which will go into effect all parts of the ocean by 2080. By 2080, they, we can see there will be a bad impact on our oceanic biodiversity that will impact marine ecosystem throughout the world. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding moon magic. So what is this moon magic? So scientists, scientists, they mainly found out that size of our moon may play a vital role in making earth what it is. Okay, so this article which is talking about what is the important role of moon in making earth what it is today. So if you're talking about details, it mainly says that especially some researchers from this Roster University in US, they mainly came with an estimate. So this estimate says that planets with the mass which is more than six times of our earth so planets with the more than the mass which is of six times of earth they are incapable or having such a large moon like earth has okay so whenever the mass of the planet is increasing that is six times than the earth then we can see they have they have incapability to having large moons so this constraint can guide so this is the one important thing which mainly guide our astronomers to study exo moons to spot moon like or moon like bo earth like bodies to study about this earth like body so this study which is very much helpful for astronomers so this is just of this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding antarctic microbes antarctic microbes may help in plastic cleanup so this article mainly talking about microbes which are present in antarctic region so this article it is important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes under your GS paper 3. So now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail. So if you are talking about context, it mainly says that a team of Argentine scientists, okay, a team of Argentine scientists, they are mainly using this microorganisms. So these microorganisms which are native to this Antarctica, and they want to explore idea of cleaning up pollution from the fields for example by your petrol by the diesels so because of this crude oils we can see the pollution is happening so what are the microbes which are present in this antarctica region so they are mainly exploring that idea of cleaning of pollution which is mainly caused by this fuels and as less potential uh, plastic potentials etc here so if you're talking about details it mainly says that these tiny microorganisms which are mainly present in Antarctica, so they are mainly munch through the waste and they are mainly going to create a naturally occurring cleaning system for pollution which mainly caused by the diesel. So it is a one of the important source of electricity and heat for the research basis in the frozen Antarctic. So what happened whenever we are using this microorganism which are present in this Antarctica, especially for the clean, especially for the uh, naturally occurring clean system means it will be also producing some heat and electricity and whatever the heat and electricity that is produced that can be used for the research basis which are mainly present in this Antarctic region. But one cause of concern here is so this continent which is mainly protected by 1961 Madrid protocol. So today's homework for you people is 
you have to do some research regarding what is this MADRED protocol of 1961 and let me know in comment box. Don't forget about this. And this research on how the microbes could help with the plastic waste could have potential for wider environmental issues. Okay. So researchers, they want to know about what will be the impact of this microbes, whether they will go for effective cleaning of this plastic waste or this diesel waste, etc. or not. So one more important cause of concern here is it will be also having some environmental issues as well. So researchers, they want to work about these microbes, okay, which are native microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, and they are mainly inhabiting in this Antarctic soil. Okay, and next one is researchers mainly collected some samples of plastic from Antarctic seas and studied to see if microorganisms are eating this plastic or simply using them as raft or not. So in the long term, so this study which is very much helpful for biotechnology and we can understand this microorganism at this, at this low temperature also, you are going for this poly, uh, polymer degradation or not. So this is just of this topic and I hope it is very much clear. And now let us try to see explanation for yesterday's question. So before seeing this explanation, I want to make a small announcement on this platform. If you want to clear this UPSC, so I will strongly suggest you to take this prelims test series and as well as mains answer writing course that we are offering in our Rathod's IS Academy. So in this prelims test series, there are about 30 tests, which includes both the C, SAT and as well as your GS. So here in this C, SAT, we are providing four tests. And here in this GS, there will be like 26 tests, which also include economic survey and as well as budget and year, India yearbook as well. There are two tests which are dedicated to this. And this will be very, very important to understand the questions, how the questions will be asked in UPSC. And this will be also helpful like that where you mainly stand. And this will be helpful for your analyzing also. And if you're talking about mains answer writing codes, this mains it is a, one of the deciding factor whether your name will be there in your finalist or not. It will be the breaks or makes a deal because prelims it is a qualifying paper and interview will not be there in your hands. So one thing that is there in your hands is mains answer writing. So if you are expert in this mains answer writing skills and if you are nailing this mains answer writing art means finally you can see your name will be there in your finalist then this is the thing I will assure you. Okay so for this we are giving you the weekly targets. So on this weekly targets, we will be giving you daily one question and there will be evaluation of your answer and we also provide you modal answer and there will be one to one mentorship also. Okay. And this course, it is a one year course. This will be exclusively useful, especially to improve your answer writing skills. And if you follow the schedule that we are providing, then I will assure you that you are going to complete your entire static portion like GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4 along with 27 essays and 26 case studies in this one year. So this will be exclusively benefit to improve your answer writing skills. So already the batch, new batch, which mainly started on February 1st and the registration will be closed by February 8th. So if you want to join this course, so please be hurry up and try to join this course as soon as possible. And apart from these two courses, we are also offering entire foundational course for this UPSC CSC 2023. And here in this foundational course, we are providing like more than 700 hours of recorded video lectures and they are very much updated and we are also including the recent current affairs as well. And each and every topic in your syllabus is discussed and this uh, conceptual clarity which is mainly assured here. So we are mainly focusing on the conceptual clarity. So because the recent trend of UPC has been changed from asking this fact based questions towards this analysis based questions to answer those analysis based questions you need to know the concept very much well that we are focusing in this courses. And if you want to take individual courses like economy, history, geography, and environment and ecology, uh, science and technology, disaster management, you can also take this individual courses and the price are very, very affordable. So if you want to talk to me directly regarding these courses, you can call to this number 8074765513. I am the academic director of this Rathor size and you can trust us. And the details of this course are given in the description box. You can visit our website for further details. And if you want to watch the demo videos, you can visit our website Rathor's Eyes Academy. And there you can watch three demo videos for free of cost. And if you want to download this Rathor's Eyes Academy website uh, app, app, you can also get the link in our description box. And now let us try to see the answers for yesterday's questions. So first question it is about rule of equality uh, that is equality before law. 
so in indian context the rule of equality before law is not absolute so it is having some exceptions so here the exceptions are given here and you have to choose the correct exceptions so first one is a member of parliament is answerable to court in the respect of anything said or any vote given by him in parliament and this one is a president or governor enjoy constitutional immunities and next one is foreign ambassadors and diplomats enjoy not only criminal immunities but also civil immunities as well so we're talking about exceptions for this equality before law so president of india and as well as governor of state they can enjoy this constitutional immunity that is the second statement and next one is no member of parliament shall be liable to any president any proceedings in the court with respect to anything said or any vote which is given by him in the parliament or any committee that means this first statement will be wrong and third statement here is foreign ambassadors and diplomats and as well as foreign sovereigns they mainly enjoy immunity from criminal and as well as civil proceedings okay so this statement is correct so correct options will be like b and c that is option 3 is correct answer and next question is regarding article 19 so in this article 19 we will be having six rights right that is regarding right to freedom actually this question which is talking about freedom of movement okay the first one is entry of outsiders in the tribal areas is restricted yes and this one is freedom of movement of prostitutes can be restricted on the grounds of public health because if they are suffering from the aids there will be the restriction on movement of those prostitutes yes this statement is also correct so here the correct answer will be both a and b correct option is 3 and today's questions are the first question it is regarding due process of law okay in indian context the concept of due process of law was introduced in which of the following cases so these are the very very important cases in our polity so please give your answer please think once before giving your answer and next one it is regarding which of the following it is not a fundamental duty so this is also a very very important question and you can get this type of questions in your prelims for sure so try to give your answers in the comment box and many students are giving your answers and it is very much encouraging me right so by this i'm concluding today i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathor's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and don't forget to enroll to these courses and if you have any queries you can call to the number number is also given in the description box So by this I'm concluding. Thank you so much.